It is very doubtful, as a matter of fact, whether the laws of physics which apply to terrestrial conditions would still be valid in the case of the upper atmosphere and of the spaces adjacent to the top of the dome, but certain data can be taken into account. The height of the heaviside layer, which is the dome of the sky, has been measured by the time taken by radar waves to return to Earth. This distance has been given as being from 40 to 50 kilometers in the daytime and 90 kilometers during nighttime but the figure obtained for the day may be considered unreliable, since it may well be believed that an acceleration takes place in the propagation of the waves due to the heat of the sun. It is known, on the other hand, that the thickness of the atmosphere has also been measured, but the atmosphere is invisible, and since the dome is the only surface on which the eye can rest, it is clear that the thickness of the atmosphere means the height of the dome. In the 11th century, the Arabs, by measuring the duration of twilight, assuming their method is acceptable, established that this thickness is 92 kilometers, and nowadays, by the same method, a figure of 64 kilometers has been obtained. A similar indication comes from Ceylon, where the inhabitants claim that the dome is there, particularly low, being only 40 miles high, i.e. 60 kilometers from the Earth. The aspect of the vault was that of a rather steep, slightly sloping dome of pyramidal shape, and it appeared to be composed of a bright metallic dark grey matter, uniformly showing small regular inequalities, like lead which has been beaten or chiseled. The larger details, particularly the craters, were clearly visible against the background, but the most impressive circumstance yet was the incredible nearness of the vault, the highest point of which did not appear to be at most any more than 60 kilometers from the earth. It may be recalled in this connection that in one of the texts of Homer, it is stated that the height of the bell-shaped vault which surrounds the Earth is only twice that of Mount Olympus. It results, therefore, from the foregoing explanations that the existence of a dome of matter encircling the Earth cannot be denied, and this fact completely revolutionizes the present-day concepts on the outer world. The Earth is not freely suspended in space, but it is resting on the floor of a cavity whose walls surround it on all sides. The sidereal expanse does no longer extend over unlimited and undetermined distances. The dimensions of our universe are now known to be restricted, and they are confined by the circular wall which encircles the Earth. It is by this obstacle that the radar waves are reflected. And we may also recall, in this aspect, the theory of heaviside leading to the existence of an upper, wave-resisting atmospheric layer, which is no other than the solid vault of the sky. There is absolutely no solid body between the Earth and the Dome of Heaven, since the constellations, like the planets, are nothing but luminous phenomena. The meteorites are obviously fragments which became detached from the vault and reached the Earth. These masses, when analyzed, prove to include a high percentage of metal, 
from which we can conclude that the inherent brilliance of the sky is due to the presence of metals in its composition. The fact is that the Earth at the beginning of time must necessarily have become separated from the adjoining mass, which now constitutes the vault of heaven, and therefore the parts now divided must contain the same elements. All the metals and ores of the Earth are consequently present in the surface of the sky. An association is actually made between metals and the sky, since the latter is instinctively compared to lead and copper in very hot countries where broiling temperatures intensify its metallic action and render it more perceptible. Comets are spontaneous luminous manifestations, which are created by electrical reactions occurring in the vault of the sky, and this explains their unexpected and sudden appearances, as well as their rapid and erratic movements, differently direct or retrograde. The passage of a comet is not accompanied by sound. That is to say that there is no electrical discharge like in the case of lightning, which causes the vault to split and dead. It can be surmised that lightning takes place in the thickness of the vault, whereas a comet is a surface phenomenon. The orbit of comets, which may be seen to sweep across the vast expanse of the sky, is described as parabolic. This means, in fact, since the passage takes place on the surface of the dome, that the orbit follows exactly the curvature of same manic wires, therefore a seemingly parabolic shape. The formation of comets seems to be due to the influence of the satellite disks of the Earth as they pass at certain points of the vault of the sky. Otherwise, when they occupy for certain degrees of the zodiac, particularly the 29th degree of Sagittarius, in the case of Enki's comet of December 21st, 1795, the Sun was at the 29th degree of Sagittarius. In that of Rook's Comet of November 11, 1911, Mercury was passing at the same degree. And again for Donati's Comet, October 2, 1858, it was Mars which was affecting its passage at this very spot. The same remark applies, moreover, to the third degree of various signs, particularly Gemini. In the last case mentioned that of Donati's Comet, Uranus was at the third degree of Gemini. For Halley's Comet, which returned on March 4, 1910, Mercury was at the same degree, Venus at the second degree of Libra, Mars at the second degree of Cancer, while simultaneously, Saturn passed to the 29th degree of Aries, etc. All these circumstances, which cannot be coincidences, point evidently to the existence of a mathematical law governing the formation of comets. Through the combined agencies of the satellites when they pass simultaneously at various degrees of the zodiac, and since the satellites have a regular motion, it follows that the periodicity of comets, if it does exist, may be due to this fact. Shooting stars are not to be confused with the stars in the ordinary sense, which form the constellations and move at a very slow pace. They are luminous manifestations which glide rapidly on the surface of the vault of heaven, without any electrical discharge towards the earth. They are thus related to vault lightning, especially as they sometimes can be heard to emit crackling sounds like sparks. Meteors are also luminous phenomena resulting from electrical reactions which occur in the vault of the sky. This figure is also consistent with the impression of the author, who has seen and observed the dome of the sky during a sufficiently long period of time to enable its probable distance to be judged, as well as humanly possible. And the conclusion is that the distance separating the surface of the earth from the sky, and which may vary in some places, does not exceed 80 to 90 kilometers. The first telescope, used by Galileo Galilei, which was of his own construction, had only a threefold magnifying power. Nevertheless, he could with this small instrument see the eminences of the vault, described by him as being the mountains of the moon. That is to say, that instead of saying 80 to 90 kilometers, 50 to 60 might be nearer the mark. The vault of the sky may not be absolutely rigid, but may at intervals alternately recede and advance, so that under these conditions the changes of atmospheric pressure would obviously result from the varying heights of the vault. The azure color of the atmosphere may, may be due to the presence in the surface of the sky of certain metals or of their alloys, which provide a blue coloring matter such as copper oxide or cobalt. This latter metal, particularly which is used for producing blue colored glass, is found in very large quantities in meteorites, and its color could be diffused by the sun onto the atmospheric layers. 
even if they do not completely reach the top of the domes as the latter could cast a reflection from a distance. I think our, all our society is run by insane people for insane objects, mm. objectives. You know, oh, yeah. And I think that's what I sussed when I was 16 and 12, way down the line. But I expressed it differently all through my life. It's the same thing I'm expressing all the time. But now I can put it into that sentence that I think we're being run by maniacs for maniacal mean, uh, ends, you know. If, if anybody can put on paper what our government and the American government, etc., and the Russian, Chinese, what they are actually trying to do, you know, and how, what they think they're doing, mm. I'd be very pleased to know what they think they're doing. I think they're all insane. You know, but I'm liable to be put away as insane for expressing that. Yeah. You know, that's what's insane. Moon and Stars. See how the Moon travels at the same speed and direction as the stars. They all move together as one, and that's not possible if you believe the official narrative that the Moon is a lot closer to the Earth than the stars. They'd all be moving at different speeds. Critics will say it's the Earth spinning that creates that effect. I, I don't get where. Are you saying that they appear to? move in the sky at the same speed? Yeah, that's because the Earth rotates. So to silence the critics, I took a flight to Australia. Ooh. 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 
Okay, so there's a star on a tree. And if we zoom out a bit, another star a little bit closer. And if we zoom out a bit more or in a bit more, there's the moon on a tree. Uh, now, if we zoom out just a little bit more, this old video camera is uh, the Earth looking at the moon and the stars in the distance and it doesn't matter which way you turn this thing you can twist it in any direction you want you cannot replicate what you see up there the moon arcing around the earth over 12 hours like this is the equivalent of this camera this is the camera is the earth and there's no way that those stars would move at the same speed and trajectory as the uh, as the moon it's impossible to replicate the moon the stars and the sun all move around the sky as if connected together they might be at different distances apart from each other but just like these rocks are connected by the ice what we see up there is somehow connected and that can only mean that the earth is stationary and the stars move around the earth. So my question to you is this, are you going to deny what you see with your own eyes that the earth is stationary and instead believe what you don't understand that the earth is spinning? Sun having moved south continually for six months makes it to its lowest point in the sky. Here a curious thing occurs. The sun stops moving south, at least perceivably, for three days. And during this three-day pause, the Sun resides in the vicinity of the Southern Cross, or Crux, constellation. And after this time, on December 25th, the Sun moves one degree, this time north, foreshadowing longer days, warmth, and spring.